Hey there, Cancer. Welcome to your reading for the week of, um, I don't know, it's in the title, October 14th or something like that. I never know. But you have this Tricky Situations card. It says a sly approach is necessary in order to safely navigate tricky situations. You have this Orbiting Space card. It says something or someone is orbiting you wanting to make its presence known. That sounds creepy there, Cancer, but... Uh, I don't know, take it how it resonates. You have the, this is your current general energies, this first row, and you have the Two of Pentacles, the High Priestess, and the Three of Pentacles. The Two of Pentacles, um, I, I definitely feel is a decision or a choice that you have to make. Um, I normally don't look at the Two of Pentacles as being a, a choice card, although it absolutely can represent that, but, um, you know, normally I look at Two of Pentacles as work hard, play hard. You know, it's a card of doing too much of one or the other. It's a card of spinning plates as well, like kind of like having too much on your plate and doing too much at once. Uh, but intuitively, I kind of feel this is a choice that you are thinking about making. <laughs> and I feel that you should trust your intuition, of course, with the high priestess, because your your intuition is like trying to guide you on that on this decision. The other thing is, is that I feel like the words, it's not going away, are popping into my head, right? So sometimes I think we have to make a decision in life and we think that if we just don't think about it or forget about it, the, the choice is going to go away. And you do have this tricky situation card that says a sly and subtle approach is necessary to safely navigate a tricky situation. So, you know, that could be why you're thinking like this or why I feel like you are thinking like this, but I don't necessarily feel like this is a bad thing. You know, I kind of feel this is a good thing. Like it's a good choice that you're going to be making. And, I, you know, I, we have the Ace of Cups in the same diagonal as this Two of Pentacles, which would be happiness. You have the Star as well in the Nine of Cups in this reading. So, you know, it kind of looks like this is a choice about a wish or something that will bring fulfillment into your life. And, you know, the other thing is, is that maybe you have a lot going on. And so, you know, your just general busyness could be making it hard to make a decision at this point. Uh, I also feel pretty good about this for money. Uh, I have some cards in the tarot that I call clue cards. It, it's not really what the card means, but it's a clue to me for something sometimes. And the two of pentacles to me can represent a settlement. And so some of you, if you're waiting for like an insurance payout or, you know, legal settlement or something, uh, this could be, I feel like, I feel that for some of you. Uh, you have the high priestess. So, um, you know, high priestess is about trusting your intuition. I also sometimes feel that she is looking, needs to look at things from a neutral perspective. Uh, she has these two pillars here, the B and the J. And I feel for a lot of you that this is saying that taking a neutral perspective on a choice that you're making or kind of looking at it from a neutral perspective, not good or bad, or, you know, not this or that would be very helpful and just kind of like looking at it from the middle. <laughs> and that's really all I'm getting here. Uh, you have the Three of Pentacles. Three of Pentacles, of course, says teamwork makes a dream work. So if you are working a lot, then, you know, getting help could be very beneficial. I also think you're like making something more than it needs to be. Uh, she, This lady here has polka dots on her cloak and the polka dots in the tarot can represent taking something too seriously and needing to like have a more playful approach in what you're doing. So I kind of feel like being more playful would also be very helpful or, or or like not taking something too seriously is what the three of pentacles is really saying now uh, with the two of pentacles you have the nine of swords yeah like i said it's like agonizing over a decision you know nine of swords is round around it's like your situation isn't going to change until you make the decision i don't even feel like this is bad I, you know nine of swords to me is the worst card in the tarot everybody always worries about the tower i'm like the tower is a good card the nine of swords is staying stuck in something and you know going round around around so I do feel that a choice needs to be made. And this can still be a good choice. You know, it can still be something positive, but it's just saying like right now, you're just sitting in on the hamster wheel or you're just running on the hamster wheel and not really getting anywhere. So, I, you know, again, I feel like a choice needs to be made. I'm still not sure what the choice is. We're gonna, you know, we'll find out. Uh, with the high priestess, you have the six of wands. The six of wands is a victory or a success. So again, if you're trying to make a decision and you're worried about whether or not it's going to be successful or not, the six of wands says it's going to be successful. So, you know, whatever choice you're thinking about making will be a success, but you have to, you know, make the choice to move towards that success. I would also be careful. I feel I'm almost a million percent sure that I've said this to you before, Cancer. Six of Wands, there's normally a lady like in the background and she's meant to look jealous. And so the Six of Wands can say, be careful who you get advice from. If you're making a choice or trying to make a decision and you've received advice from people, it's like, be careful of where that advice is coming from, right? And, um, you know, make I would make the choice that you want to make is kind of what I'm saying. 
Uh, with the Three of Pentacles, you have the Devil. Uh, the Devil can, of course, represent toxic energy, so again, be careful of who you're taking advice from. Uh, but I feel like the Devil is more talking about action the devil is a card of temptation. I, I actually wonder if you are having a hard time making a decision because you're wondering if you're being tempted or not. <laughs> and it's like some, like I think, um, you know, if we have too many failures, right, in, in life, and in, like especially in business or work, right, I think we can think to ourselves, I've had too many failures. It, it, like, is this just another um, thing that I am building up in my head to be better than it actually is, you know, and I kind of get that feeling here with the devil, but I feel the reading itself is saying, no, you know, you go ace, ace of cups to the star. And so, and even you go five of cups to the nine of cups here. And so I kind of feel like this is saying, no, uh, you could also be attracting a Capricorn, by the way, you have the, uh, devil in the queen of pentacles. So if you're looking for love, there you go. Uh, next in the area of what's coming in for you, you have this Yang moon. It says strength on it. You also have this moon struck. It says take a breath on it as well. So some of you need to take a breath. I feel like you have to have the strength to uh, see something clearly because we have the queen of swords at the top. The queen of swords is looking over uh, to the star. The queen of swords has clouds only halfway up her body. And this represents the fact that she's seeing cl things clearly for the first time. And so if she, again, is has her hand out. She's willing to receive the star. And the star could be something that you're wishing for. She's kind of like cautiously optimistic. Um, you know, I look at her as like higher, slow, fire, fast, as they say, right? So even in love, like if you're, in, she's saying like you can receive love, but she has that sword up. So if it isn't right, cut it off very quickly. We only get hurt when we stay in situations that we know aren't right, right? So the Queen of Swords says it's okay to accept a blessing into your life as long as you also make sure that it's really a blessing. And if it's not a blessing and you, you know, remove it from your life very quickly, and this could be anything. Uh, you have the Two of Swords and the Ace of Cups. These wanted to come out together. So again, the Two of Swords making a decision. She is thinking that, you know, a decision is this or that, but really there's this third option behind her. And she needs to realize that, you know, there are many ways that something could turn out or there are many ways that something can go in her life, but she needs to like see it. She also needs to trust her intuition. You know, uh, the blindfolds in the tarot can say that you need to trust your intuition. Uh, you also have the Ace of Cups. Ace of Cups says, follow your heart. You know, following your heart, you'll never go wrong. So I would make sure that you're following your heart with the Ace of Cups. We even have the Three of Swords here. So the Three of Swords can say that to follow your heart, you need to heal your heart. And the Three of Swords is all about forgiveness and forgiving past situations. Uh, those swords are in your own heart. So when you remove those swords from your heart, then you can follow your heart. And that's really what I feel like this is saying right here. Uh, you have the f five of cups, five, of, you know, again, we, uh, like uh, blah, blah, blah. what I'm trying to say here, cancer, is that a lot of the stuff in this reading is kind of saying that you're too focused on past disappointments. You know, the five of cups, the solution to this card is that he has to be grateful for what he has. And then he gets this bridge in the castle. He's kind, kind of sp uh, crying over spilt wine. And the story of this card is that he's grieving the loss of something that he no longer enjoys. So like, even if you want love, for example, I get tons of comments where people say, everybody's a cheater or, you know, everybody does this to me or that to me. I'm like, well, that's what you're focusing on. So of course, that's what you're gonna get. When you change your focus and you focus on what you want and you stop telling that old story, then you will get something new. And we go this way, uh, three of swords to the nine of swords, which is literally saying like when you change your story, then something better will rush in much faster. So again, the whole entire reading is saying that it would be a good time for you to like change your story or to stop talking about what other people have done to you and, or other, you know, any failures you've had as well. I would stop telling that story as well. Uh, with the Queen of Swords, yeah, you have the Hermit. The Hermit has the star in his lantern, and I always say that he needs to shine that star out all over the place, and you have the star right next to it, so I think it's time for you to kind of like shine your inner light, and I also feel it's time for you to like stop restricting yourself. You know, I get a little bit of restriction here in this reading. It's almost like you are restricting yourself from something that could be a blessing, but this could be based off a of past fear, and you know, that's kind of what this right here says to me, the star with the three of swords, that, um, you know, you could have something you want, whatever it is, doesn't matter, and it's going to probably make you very happy with the star, but I feel like you have to remove the restriction on yourself. With the Two of Swords and the Ace of Cups, uh, you have the Seven of Wands, same thing. Seven of Wands is kind of like thinking that you're not ready for something. I feel like this has come up for you in the past like 10 readings, <laughs> at least. 
that I've said to you that you think you're not ready, but really, you're, you know, we're never ready for anything in life, and you're as ready as you're going to be, so you might as well go for what you want here with the Seven of Wands. You know, Seven of Wands can be a card of restriction. Seven of Wands is also a card that says when you know that you know, that something is going to be successful for you, it will be successful. So Seven of Wands is about putting up those boundaries or, you know, kind of like really committing to making something happen. And obviously we are in a time of the star. We have Pluto moving into Aquarius in November. And I believe that Pluto and Aquarius is going to be a great time for people to, to kind of have like a single focus, have a North Star in their life that they commit to and then make happen. So this could be a goal, wish, dream, you know, pretty much anything you want. But I would come up with something and commit to it. Uh, with the Five of Cups, you have the Queen of Pentacles. You have very well-connected reading, I would say. Um, this is one of those readings where I feel the cards really kind of flow very nicely together, and uh, which really doesn't happen very often. And so you have the Queen of Pentacles twice. Queen of Pentacles is kind of saying you have more than enough resources. You know, the resources could be your time, your effort, your energy. Um, could be your mindset, could be your story. It's like you have the resources necessary uh, to be very successful. And, you know, I, I think you just need to know that. And the Queen of Pentacles, I'll show you on this version, she is focused on the pentacle, not the rabbit. The rabbit can represent fears and anxiety, but she's focused on the pentacle. You know, the card itself says she's focusing on the right things. She's not focusing on the three spilt cups, on the, the five of cups, for example. So your focus is going to be important. Uh, next in the area of messages from your future self, you have this butterfly spirit. It says transformation is beautiful. You also have this pig spirit. It says use your mind wisely. So I do feel you are going through a transformation. And you know this transformation is probably you working towards the star. Uh, the pig spirit says use your mind wisely. So I think you already know like what to do. But I also feel that you need to make sure that you're not like uh, you know, catastrophizing. You know, I think you need to make sure that you're not making making something out to be something that could lead to disaster. You know, I would also say, like, I think balance is the key here. Uh, you have the star, the three of swords, and the queen of pentacles. The star is a card of, like, hope, faith, and renewal. I kind of feel like something is giving you hope this week. You know, she's pouring this water onto the land, and this w water is coming from the pool of universal consciousness, and it's flowing out into the earth. And so the star itself kind of says what's possible for one person is possible for everyone. So anything you want to do, I think, is going to be possible for you, but you have to, like, put the work in to really make it happen. Uh, you have the three of swords. Three of swords can be heartbreak. I really feel it's like a past heartbreak or you know, part of your story. It's like something that you say over and over again to yourself. We all, you know, do this. We all have those things that we say to ourselves that we shouldn't say to ourselves. And I feel like the Three of Swords is talking about you either forgiving that, forgiving yourself, or forgiving the situation and uh, releasing those swords and pulling them out of your own heart. So the easy way to do this is, again, to forgive the situation. You don't have to forgive a person or a place or whatever hurt you directly. All you have to do is, you know, forgive the situation in your heart, and then you will move past it. You have the Queen of Pentacles, and again, the Queen of Pentacles is all about resourcefulness. And it's also Capricorn, which is your opposite sign. And so, you know, working, sometimes I do feel that, you know, we need to, of course, work on, on the energy of our opposite sign. And so, you know, you might want to start working with the energy of Capricorn, or, you know, there might be certain things about Capricorn, um, you know, certain traits of Capricorn that would benefit you uh, at this time. So like not giving up, being perseverant, uh, being willing to climb to the top of the mountain as well, things like that, being resourceful would also be a good thing. The other thing I think people forget about Capricorn energy is that Capricorn in Vedic astrology was uh, traditionally a crocodile, not a, a sea goat, right? And so the crocodile is kind of like a sit and wait predator. I think Capricorn uh, people are very good at like spotting, like kind of like waiting for an opportunity. And then when the opportunity comes, they strike, they, they grab onto the opportunity. And that's definitely popping into my head for you, Cancer. I know someone's gonna correct me in the comments. I've been talking about Capricorn energy. So before you correct me, yes, I realize I'm speaking to cancer. So there you go. But what I would say is I think it would be a good time for you to embrace the Capricorn energy, even though you're not a Capricorn. Uh, you have to be flexible here. I know that's hard for some people, but you know, again, I, I think embracing that energy of like waiting for the opportunity and then pouncing is the, the secret here. Uh, with the star card, you have the Ten of Cups. Really good. Uh, especially with the star, this would definitely be a, a blessing. Uh, Ten of Cups is like happy home, happy family. It's focusing on happiness, which clearly you don't want to focus on the Two of Swords and the Three of Swords. You need to focus on you know the story that feels good, the story that feels right. 
Uh, Ten of Cups in the Star is also fortune after difficulty. So, you know, there could be some blessings coming in after a difficult period of time. With the Three of Swords, you have the Eight of Pentacles. Eight of Pentacles is like diligent work. So another thing that you could probably embrace from Capricorn energy is working diligently on something, working on something until it's complete. And so that could be also very helpful, especially if you're working on something with a star. You know, the star can be a long journey. You know, it's obviously stars are very far away. And so if you have a North Star, this is a long journey that you're going to go on. And Eight of Pentacles is, you know, kind of climbing that mountain, you know, doing the work to get to your goal. Uh, with the Queen of Pentacles, you have the Six of Swords. Yeah, definitely improvements coming in for you this week. Um, the Six of Swords would be moving on to calmer shores. A lot of you, um, I think I think this came up in your um, uh, October, your fourth quarter reading that I just did. I'm pretty sure it was you that you could be really focused on improving your finances. And these two cards together would be very good for doing that. That that was the chariot, <laughs> by the way. I, I don't really take pop-outs, but that was too good not to. So uh, the chariot is your card, and the chariot is a victory as well. Uh, next in the area of the good stuff, you have the sacred union card. You also have this fertility and creation card. It is that we are in a very creative time. So I think that creating anything you're creating uh, could be very good for you. Uh, there could also be a good match coming in for you. This doesn't have to be love. It doesn't even look like a love reading to me. So, you know, the sacred union could be a union between uh, you and yourself, you and your higher self. It could be uh, what your heart wants and what your head wants. You could be mixing those two things together. Um, you know, it could be any type of union, but I think there is something great coming in for you. And I feel like it's going to come in very quickly uh, once you change your story. So the, the, the trick with this reading is definitely going to be uh, the words that you use against yourself, the things that you say about yourself, and the story that you tell about yourself. I'm a big fan of um, talking to yourself, right? Um, I'm a Pisces. I talk to myself all day long. I actually, my, my brother's office is, is is right here. I try to talk to him. doesn't listen to a word I say. So I don't know. I, am I really talking to myself? Not really. Talk to my dog as well. That's a good one. So I would say talk to yourself. Tell yourself the story that you want to tell yourself, and that will lead to the most success. Uh, you have the Seven of Wands here. The Seven of Wands is a card of conviction. It says, again, you have the Seven of Wands twice. It says, when you know that you know that something is for you, then it's for you. Uh, I, I also feel like this is saying you're ready. Like the Net of Swords normally would represent rushing into something and doing something too quickly. And even if you feel like you're doing something too quickly this week, I feel like you're not. Like it might feel that way. It might feel a little bit out of control. Um, but what I would say is that you're actually in control. Kind of reminds me of like when I was a kid, I used to go co cross country skiing, right? And I don't like roller coasters, things like that. I, I get speed in other areas of my life, right? <laughs> and um, I, I used to go to this place where you, you had to ski down this big hill and I hated it because I hated going down that hill. But it's like when I would do I would do it, and then when I got to the bottom, I felt really good. And I, that's what I feel here for you with the Knight of Swords and the Seven of Wands. It's almost like you're looking down this big hill, and it's like you're kind of crapping your pants because you're about to take like a risk or you're about to do something, but I feel like you will feel so good when you do it. It's going to be exhilarating, right? And I kind of feel a little bit of a exhilaration here with the Nine of Cups if you take a risk. The Nine of Cups is also total fulfillment. So there could be some uh, fulfillment coming in for you with the Nine of Cups. But uh, let's see. With the Knight of Swords, you have the Page of Cups. Could be love for some of you. You know, the Page of Cups could be an admirer. Uh, could be you accepting love into your life. Like the Knight of Swords could be a person approaching you very quickly or, you know, it could be something that moves quickly. But, you know, if it works, it works. With the Seven of Wands, you have the Queen, uh, King of Wands. Did you? I thought you had the Queen of Wands as well, but I guess not. But you know what I would say about the King of Wands is I, I think this would be a very good energy for you to embrace this week. You know, being bold, being assertive, going down that hill, right? Just doing it, ripping the Band-Aid off. I think that will be the most helpful. Uh, with the Nine of Cups, you have the Ten of Swords. Again, coming up in the good stuff. So this could say that you're seeing that something um, that didn't work out in the past was a blessing in disguise. Um, I also feel that the Ten of Swords could just be kind of like a blessing that something isn't working out. <laughs> and so, yeah, uh, if you're like working on something that you don't want to be working on, it, this could be that like little bit of relief that something actually isn't working. Uh, you have this independence card. Yes, I think that independence is a key word for water signs right now. I think water signs in general have too much input from external influences right now at this time. So I think that listening to yourself is going to be, you know, should be your first priority. That does not mean that you can't take advice from people, but it just means like, what does your heart say? Ace of Cups. 
And you have this companionship card. Yeah, it could be like a true companion coming in for those of you that want a connection. Uh, you have this egotism card. Sometimes I think fear is ego, you know? So it's like if you're fearing, you know, going down that hill, it's like you, what, it, it could be the ego in the sense that you're afraid of falling and looking like a fool in front of your friends, right? And so I kind of feel that this is about like needing to kind of get over yourself, right? <laughs> and I mean that in the nicest way possible, Cancer. So I don't, I'm not saying you have like an ego, like you're a jerk or something. I'm, I'm saying that, you know, this could be a little bit of needing to not care what people think. Uh, you have this detachment card. Can't make that up, right? Detaching from outcome is going to be your superpower at this time, for sure. Uh, and you have this influence card, I told you. So this card, same thing. It's like, you know, if you want to connect with something, these two people want to be together, but there's like an external influence. So I would be careful of what, like I said on that six of wands, I definitely got it. And I, I think I've said this to you before, that you need to not listen to what other people are saying. It's like, you know, it's like sometimes people say things and I, I think that they, they have good intentions, but they really don't know what they're talking about. And, you know, that's kind of what I feel here. And it doesn't have to be love, although I feel for some of you it is. It's like maybe you're interested in someone and maybe your best friend is like, oh, no, don't date that person. But what like what you don't know is your best friend's actually interested in that person. Like I kind of get that type of thing going on here. So I would be careful of who you listen to and I would listen to yourself. A pretty good reading, Cancer. I like this. Um, so thank you for being here and definitely enjoy your week.